In this video, we'll look at optimal power restoration, which is part of the reliability analysis module. Study case 5.1, optimal power restoration, should be active. Optimal power restoration can be used to determine the best sequence of switch events to restore customer supply as efficiently as possible following fault clearing and faulted equipment isolation. Here we'll show how to use the function directly, but it should also be noted that optimal power restoration is used within reliability assessment, and in fact most of the required settings are configured within the reliability assessment command dialog. In this demonstration, we'll analyze a fault on line LN1834, which is here in the network. This part of the network is supplied via three feeders, which are represented in a schematic diagram. This is line LN1834, where the fault would occur. The calculation command is found in the Optimal Power Restoration Toolbox. Line LN1834 has already been selected as the fault location and we can follow this link to look at the settings in the Reliability Assessment command dialog. In this first setting, we specify how the priorities of the loads are indicated. Here, we assume that switching actions can be carried out immediately following the specified switching time. The other option is more pessimistic and would represent a situation where a single operator must carry out each switch operation in turn. Here, we've opted to consider sectionalizing, which influences how quickly switches can be operated. To understand this option, let's look at a typical circuit breaker. If Stage 1 is selected, the switch can be operated remotely. If Stage 2 is selected, the switch must be operated locally, but its status is available outside the switch enclosure. Stage 3 switches have to be visually inspected to determine their status before being operated, so this takes the longest. For each stage, we can choose to what extent tie-open points may be moved in order to restore power. Three options are available. In this panel, options are offered to specify how power should be restored to bus bars of supplying substations if they are unsupplied following the fault. And finally, if this option is selected, the restoration uses a more precise algorithm to solve load flow convergence issues during the restoration process, but the calculation can take longer to run as a result. Note that on the constraints page of the Reliability Assessment command, we've specified that thermal and voltage limits must be observed during the restoration process. In some cases, this can only be achieved through load shedding. And on the maintenance page, we have selected this option. This means that the assessment will be carried out both for the case where the network is initially intact and for the case where planned outages are taken into account. In our case, there's just one planned outage, which is an outage of this line. Let's now return to the Optimal Power Restoration command and run the calculation. Using this icon, we can generate recovery scheme reports which show the sequences of switch events. The contingency case can be selected here. We'll start with the case where there's no planned outage. In this section of the report, the sequence of switch actions is set out. 
Now let's follow the recovery scheme step by step on the schematic diagram using the trace feature. We'll select the relevant fault case and start the trace. This step shows the initial load flow. Now the fault has occurred and circuit breaker SW1637 in substation 2 has opened to clear the fault. This leads to a loss of supply of 1053 kilowatts. In the next step, SW2244 opens, which then allows SW1637 to be closed again. In the final step, SW1676 is opened on the other side of the fault to complete the isolation of the faulted equipment. And SW2284, which was previously open and formed a tie-open point, is closed in order to resupply the loads, completing the process. The situation looks satisfactory with all load resupplied, but it will be interesting to see what effect the planned outage might have. So let's now run the report and the trace for that scenario. We start again with the initial load flow. Then in the second step, the planned outage is applied. Already we can see that this has depressed the voltage levels in the area. Now the fault has occurred and as before, circuit breaker SW1637 opens. And again in the next step, SW2244 opens, which then allows SW1637 to be reclosed. As before, SW1676 is opened to complete the isolation of the faulted equipment, and SW2284 is closed to resupply the loads. However, in this case, full restoration of supply is not possible without violating voltage limits. So two further switches have been opened in order to shed load. It's clear that the planned outage worsens the impact of this fault, which will in turn adversely affect the reliability indices of the network. But the optimization process has found the best solution for this scenario and restored as much supply as possible.